gently close your eyes and do deep breathing We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्तु सहवीर्यम करवावहै तेजस विनावदि तमस्तु मावित विशावहै ओम शांति 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses 68 to 72 of chapter 2. Tasma Dhyasya Mahabaho Tasma Dhyasya Mahabaho Nigrihitani Sarvashaha Nigrihitani Sarvashaha Indriyani Indriyate Biaha Indriyani Indriyate Biaha Tasya Pragna Pratishtita Tasya Pragna Pratishtita Yanisha Sarva Bhuta Nam Yanisha Sarva Bhuta Nam Tasyam Jagati Sayami Tasyam Jagati Sayami Yasyam Jagati Bhuta Ni Yasyam Jagati Bhuta Ni Sanisha Pashyato Muni Sanisha Pashyato Muni Apuryamana Machala Pratishtam Apuryamana Machala Pratishtam Samudramapa Pravishanti Yadvat Samudramapa Pravishanti Yadvat Tadvat Kamayam Pravishanti Sarve Tadvat Kamayam Pravishanti Sarve Sashanti Mapnoti Nakama Kami Sashanti Mapnoti Nakama Kami Vihaya Kaman Yas Sarvan Vihaya Kaman Yas Sarvan Pumams charati nispruhaha Pumams charati nispruhaha Nirmamo nirahankaraha Nirmamo nirahankaraha Sashanti madhigat 
गति एषा ब्राह्मी स्थिति पार्थ ब्राह्मी स्थिति पार्थ नैना प्राप्य विमुह्यति ृछति हरिओ and a very good day to all of you so last few weeks i have been uh, increasing the energy the reason is this verse is so deep that unless and until you penetrate you will not be able to grasp the deeper imports and in order to penetrate you require the help of the higher shakti the higher energy if you want to merely superficially um uh, study this uh, in an intellectual way then you don't require the uh, to to increase the uh, the higher shakti so just as you know if you study about swimming if you read a book on swimming now you cannot become an expert swimmer if you read about a particular sweet let us say that that sweet tastes like this it tastes so wonderful but the actual experience of eating the sweet is something which is um totally different it is not merely a difference in degree but it is a it it is completely different the depth adds a new dimension to your experience if you want to go on a world tour if you just do it on a map now what is the experience of seeing all the places in a map and actually going to those places and experiencing so that is the difference between the intellectual approach and the yogic approach so every little thing which we are learning here we should uh experientially learn that we should be able to feel that our mind should be able to feel that our intellect intellects should be able to uh grasp what is being said and not only that the experience should be uh complete that is you know whenever you get inspired by something whenever you uh, uh actually uh get an experience a physical experience your senses everything will get brightened there will be a, a kind of an energy flow which you will feel when you actually experience which you cannot get by mere bookish study so the difference between the example which i gave that is you reading uh, about the places or seeing the places in the map and actually going 
and the spiritual path is that here when we read these things you don't need to go anywhere to experience the experience happens within you only wherever you are if you invoke the higher shakti the master is doing it for you so all you need to do is just absorb that when you do that then every little thing which is being said will start giving you that inner experience you may find it very difficult to put it in words but your entire personality will start uh changing the way you talk the way you walk the way you uh, speak the way you feel the way you perceive life everything will start changing for the better so when we are studying a verse like this which is so powerful it can cause a certain disturbance within you initially because the higher energy is being invoked whenever the higher energy is invoked it starts uh, the cleaning up process the internal cleaning up process so that can cause a little bit of uh, uncomfortable feeling because the negativities which you have stored in the deeper layers of your personality uh, will have to be washed out see if the energy is increased too much if the higher shakti is invoked too much you will not be able to take it because the cleaning up process will be so fast and it requires uh, enormous strength uh, to be able to bear the the force of that energy so that is why it is being done very gradually when you go and surrender to the guru he does it in a very gradual way so that you are able to easily digest the whole thing so some of you may have been shaken a bit you may find a lot of uncomfortable feeling it does not matter things will settle down as we go along that uncomfortable feeling which you are which you are experiencing is not because of the this wisdom it is because of the uh, negative energy which you have stored within yourself and when this wisdom and the higher energy is trying to clean it up it uh, you know it comes out it gets released at that time you may feel a little uncomfortable so that is where devotion will help devotion to the supreme god devotion to your guru so the with the higher blessings you will be able to easily uh, wade through all these challenges see at every level of uh, growth this uh, process will happen the process of cleaning up so supposing you are at 7 uh, let us say 30% level then uh, when you gain the wisdom when you absorb the the high, uh, when you receive the higher shakti what will happen is all the negativities pertaining to the 30% will all get washed away then you move to 40% level now the when you do sadhana you will be able to absorb more so the negativities pertaining to 40% which are which will be more subtle than the earlier will start getting released and then similarly further higher levels so at every level it is the same principle 
of cleaning up. So you should not uh, stop your uh, sadhana because of that uncomfortable feeling. See, in any growth, there, uh, you know, uh, there will be a certain amount of uh, uncomfortable feeling because you need to uh, leave whatever you are used to. You have to come out of your comfort zone. That will be a little painful. When you go to the school for the first time, when you see children, uh, they'll all be crying because they, they are coming out of their comfort zone. They are going for uh, education. I know people, when they shift their homes, they feel very uncomfortable for a while. So, as, a, as an aspiring yogi, you should learn to uh, handle this, this, uh, this inner feeling of uncomfortableness so that uh, you come out of your comfort zones on a day-to-day -day basis. That is, you should not be doing the same thing. That is, you, you should not be at the same level forever. You, you should be willing to try new, new things. That is what I was uh, mentioning when I was explaining Jagra last time in one of the dimensions where constant effort is involved, uh, should be there. So you should, uh, you should, uh, you should keep on learning new things in life. Not pertaining to your field alone, that is, uh, uh, that is also there, but even in the other areas of life, you should keep learning new things. You should, you should come out of your comfort zone. See, in spirituality, when we go to the highest level, they are saying, you are not the waker, you are not the dreamer, you are not the deep sleeper. You are that Supreme Self. So when the experience of enlighten, enlightenment happens, you have to leave everything which you know, which you don't know, and your consciousness will expand and become one with the infinite. You will, you see, you need to be prepared for that. That is why as a relative sadhana, they are suggesting these small, small uh, practices. Right from now itself, every day you ask yourself, okay, I am feeling very comfortable with these, these habits. Now, can I improve these habits? Can I improve my life in any way? It will cause a certain amount of uh, uncomfortable feeling because you will have to come out of your comfort zone to do that. But practice it. Train your mind to uh, to come out of the comfort zone and plunge into the unknown area. To conquer that uncomfortable feeling and jump into the unknown. Here, in this context, unknown means that which you are trying to uh, develop, that new habit which you are trying to develop. So, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you keep practicing this, at one time when you come to a very advanced level, at the highest level, you will, you, you will have the capacity to drop everything, all forms of conditioning and merge with that infinite. So, I have received a, a question, uh, Keshav has put it in the YouTube section. I am just reading out the question. Pranam sir, when you had mentioned about Om emerging and ending at silence, it was such a powerful message, inspirational. Recently you have been drilling the concept of Jagra into us. This has made me realize there is some fear in me 
reasons and origins are unknown. This fear prevents me from taking this effort. My request to Guruji to help penetrate this seems like a block to me. Thanks for the session, sir. So what is this block? It is nothing but the fear, that uncomfortable feeling to come out of the comfort zone. You always want to stay with whatever you know. If you have been staying in a particular house, you, you will get attached there. Then to move to a different place, you will find it very difficult. If you are um, doing a particular activity, suddenly if another activity is suggested, your mind will be afraid to try it out. This is uh, the natural tendency of the mind. The mind is like a child. Just as a child is afraid to go to school, the first day the child is crying. Similarly, your mind is afraid to leave the old habits and become and, and take up new habits. When you are ignorant about your own negativities, you are happily sitting. They say, no, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is not real bliss. Since you don't know the problem, you are blissfully unaware. So suddenly, when the wisdom, when the light is shown, the jagra, you know, the awakening starts happening. Now you begin to become aware of the various uh, uh, negativities within you. Now this will definitely cause a certain amount of fear, a certain amount of resistance. So how can you overcome that? That is a block only, which everyone will face. So how can you overcome that? Last week itself, I had given a tip to uh, the person who had asked how to overcome tamas, you know. You just force yourself, get into action. Surrender to the higher and with full devotion, get into activity. See, how can a child overcome that fear of going to school? It is only by going to school it can overcome. How can you overcome the fear of uh, the unknown? By taking a plunge into it. So, it is a very good question. It'll, it is, uh, it will be uh, very useful to all the sadhaks. In spirituality, at every step, you will be moving into new, new dimensions. And, at, and uh, when you are moving into a new dimension in terms of thinking, in terms of feeling, in terms of acting, speaking, now initially, you will face this block. So, it is only through your willpower. See, when you understand this whole process, then you will willingly uh, practice whatever I am saying. If this is forced upon you, you will find it very difficult to practice. That's why I am explaining the logic to you, so that you first understand what is happening, why this uncomfortable feeling is there, why this fear is there. It becomes easy for you to conquer. It is not only with respect to human beings, even with respect to all other creatures, the same fear is there. See, when a bird learns to fly, it is so fearful. You know, I saw a, a video where um, a, a young and young eagle is on the top of the hills and uh, it, it is looking at all the birds uh, flying and it knows how to fly but it is afraid to take that step to jump from the hills. It's a beautiful video, no? They have uh, 
captured that for about half an hour it, it is it tries to flap the wings and again stops it tries to flap the wings and again stops but then finally it takes the plunge and the moment it takes the plunge it just soars into the sky the 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 moment it conquers that hesitation that fear then the entire sky the beauty of the sky is revealed to that bird you know when the mother bird teaches the young ones to fly they slowly slowly try to get the young ones out of the comfort zone so first it brings the food and puts it into the young one's mouth in the nest then slowly the mother bird sits uh, that is uh, it is just outside the nest with the food uh, just with the beak inside and it uh, encourages the young ones to walk a little bit and collect the food and then after a while once the young ones get used to it once they are ready further the mother bird moves a little away from the nest and waits with the food so the young ones are uh, so afraid to come out of the nest but the mother bird patiently waits with the food you will have to come and uh, the, then what happens is finally the young ones they um, take that step you know they just jump out of the nest collect the food and immediately they jump back into the nest so much of fear so much of hesitation is there the mother bird goes on increasing the distance and then next is it, it goes and st- uh, sits on the branch of the tree and invites the young ones the young ones they for it even if they take half an hour the mother bird does not go with the food near the young ones it looks uh, as if the mother bird is cruel but the mother bird is actually kind it is training the young ones to fly and then the young ones they take that step and come on to the branch they just fly a few steps come to the bra- branch collect the food and then again they go back to the nest but once the these young ones are ready then what the mother bird does is it entices and as the young ones jump to collect the food the mother bird starts flying and the young ones also fly with the mother bird this is how your spiritual path is also your guru is like the mother bird who is who will who is trying to teach how to fly and it's not going to be easy the comfort of the nest that is the comfort of whatever you know will uh, you know will not allow you to t- to take that step so little by little you need to conquer your weaknesses if uh, the uh, ma- mother bird pushes the young ones outside straight away and, and if it says fly the young ones will die because they will not be able to take that much amount of force so it has to be done gradually so in the spiritual path when you are practicing the sadhana of getting awakened don't worry gradually day by day you become better every day learn something new come out of your comfort zone conquer one negativity of yours and keep on improving day by day after a while the same fear the same hesitation will become an inspiration for you because the moment you are hesitating you, you your deeper mind will know that yes if i just j- take that jump another new dimension will be opened unto me because of the previous experiences of growth that will get registered in the deeper mind then it will it will be willing to try so through sadhana 
you need to overcome all your tamas your fears your hesitations till you become a free bird that is the state of turiya the fourth state so when we were uh, when i was explaining the sadhana of jagra from the relative level i had given you various points no like you should be watchful attentive in everything which you do then foreseeing being provident planning for the future don't lead a mechanical life you sh- you should plan for the future see planning for the future doesn't necessarily mean everything which you you are planning will happen it is not expecting things to happen it is basically planning see for example on a in, in during the rainy season when you are going out you will take an umbrella and go this is a small plan in case it rains because there's a lot of there's a probability there is more probability that it will rain so you take an umbrella that is different from actually expecting rain to come so planning for the future means being prepared for something in the future in case that happens that doesn't mean you expect something to go wrong see life has its own course only but when you plan and program your life what happens is you get a lot of clarity you get a direction and your ability to achieve your goals your your ability to uh, get to know whatever you want from life and lead a purposeful life increases so that is why the the he, he the these great yogis are saying you should uh, do some planning you should have goals in life for you to get a direction for you to get that focus because uh, this question may come to your mind just because i plan something for the future does it mean that future will uh, happen exactly according to my plans maybe may not be so we cannot control uh, all the forces in the universe but what we can control is our own mind so this sadhana of jagra that is planning fixing a goal and planning and all that is being given so that right now in the present moment you you get a direction and you are able to channelize all your energies in one direction then you are increasing the chances of uh the future happening according to whatever you want in spite of all that uh something else may happen that is fine still you have acted with a lot of clarity with uh, a lot of focus so as a sadhak you should practice that and then i told you that that uh, willingness to put an effort all the time never ever want something without putting in effort a yogi never goes for something uh, free you know that tendency of the mind should be overcome see we always want uh, everything free in life that is we don't want to contribute anything but we want uh, the benefits that should never be there so th- th- these are all the, uh, the different aspects of jagra i have given a few where which are more than enough for you to practice and transform your life now this entire uh, uh, concept which is saying that which is nisha night for all being in that the self control one is awake so he is talking of night and day now this gives you a very deep insight if you were to actually take the night the night is very dark 
and if you take the day it is bright you you are able to see everything now when it is pitch dark you you are you are unable to see anything then you may fall into a pit you will not know where there is a pit you may you know you may have uh, various uh, stones lying on the road or uh, some tree may there may be there you may go and hit yourself against a tree so all the uh, you know the kinds of accidents are possible the moment it is uh, day time then you know ah here is a pit i should avoid and go here is a tree so i should avoid the tree and walk in this direction so the you your clarity increases so you don't need to change anything outside if you just bring more light into your life let things remain as they are you will know how to move about uh, you will you will know what route to take you know in order to ensure that your journey is safe similarly let the external circumstances remain as they are beyond a point you cannot change them but if you bring in this light of wisdom the higher wisdom uh, within you then you you will be you will start seeing everything very clearly then you will know how to conduct yourself in life so that uh, you know your happiness factor does not reduce so that your stress does not increase it's a, it's a beautiful uh, poetic way of putting here when he talks of night and day which itself gives you the uh, a deep insight into what your sadhana is a tremendous clarity to function in life see supposing uh, there is a room and all the uh, furnitures are kept in a haphazard way now due to which the moment you enter the room you are hitting yourself against some furniture or other and it is causing a lot of pain to you now how will you solve that situation one way is you try to rearrange the furniture but uh, you are unable to rearrange the furniture because there is no light at all it is completely dark in order to rearrange the furniture you require light this is a precondition so then you switch on the light the moment the room is lighted up then your capacity to rearrange the furniture increases but even before you rearrange the furniture even if the furniture uh, the, all the chairs and tables are in a haphazard way you you will not get hurt by them because you are able to see things clearly so these are the two things which will happen when the jagra that is the awakening happens within you our awakening means this how the light of this wisdom uh, is something where when you activate within you it is like bringing light in a room where the furniture uh, the pieces of furniture are in a haphazard way so even before rearranging things the first thing that will happen is you will not get affected by we the various events the various negative things which are happening outside you that is the first step and then the second thing that will happen is your capacity to uh change things externally will also increase i wouldn't say they'll become 100% because uh the world is not meant for you and me as an individual alone it is meant for everyone but definitely your capacity increases to a very good extent to change things externally also now without switching on the light if you go on trying to change to rearrange the furniture externally it will not make any difference in spite of doing all that you will keep going and hitting yourself against the furniture this is what most uh, people are doing they are trying to constantly 
solve their problems of life without bringing in the higher light, without gaining the spiritual wisdom. So in spite of doing so many things, they are still stressed. Actually, a person has sent a question. He is a uh, you know, top person in his company, he is a CEO and what, what he is asking is, I have attended so many seminars, I have, I have learned to manage people, I have learned to manage my time, you know, time management seminars have gone. All these are there, but my stress factor is not reducing. So he has asked this question, why? The answer to that is this only. You are constantly trying to rearrange things outside, but you are not bringing the light in. So, in the spiritual uh, path, we don't bother about rearranging the furniture. The Guru is not concerned about all that. He just helps you to switch on that light. The light of wisdom. And when, that li uh, when you bring in light, then all your stress, the knocks and shocks of life will have to reduce and then finally disappear. Not because things have become perfect outside, but because your approach in life has changed completely. So, how does the night become day? Not at one go. It gradually happens. At one point of time, it's pitch dark and then slowly, slowly, you know, during dawn, a little bit, you're able to see. And then the light goes on increasing gradually and finally, the, uh, you're able to get the full sunlight. It is the same thing only happens to you uh, uh, when it comes to awakening also, that jagra. It's not that today you're completely ignorant and tomorrow suddenly 100% you will be awakened. It doesn't happen like that. It happens very, very gradually. And every step you grow, a little more light you uh, will be awakened from within, the light of the wisdom. And that will give you more clarity. So, what does a guru do? He goes on increasing the, the light of wisdom. He activates all these faculties from within you. And as the light goes on increasing, you know exactly what you should do in your life. The clarity automatically comes. The guru does not need to tell what you should do. His duty is to bring in the light, is to activate the light from within and give you that clarity of vision. Any amount of advice can be given in darkness. You will still, see, you may be able to solve that particular problem, but you will still create some other problem. See, like the, supposing in that pitch darkness, if uh, I tell you, uh, don't go to your left, you will hit uh, yourself against this table. Now, you may avoid that, but you may go and hit yourself against something else. So, these kinds of uh, temporary solutions will not work. In spirituality, we aim at a permanent transformation. That is the meaning of Sanyami. Sanyami is a person who has gained complete self-mastery. How, how did he gain the self-mastery? By becoming awake, by bringing in that light where there is darkness. The very word Guru means, Gu means light, uh, sorry, a darkness. Ru means light. One who brings light where there is darkness. It is symbolic. Light means that wisdom, the higher wisdom. So, don't focus on changing things outside. 
just change yourself everything will become fine your stress will reduce and it will become nil your capacity to be cheerful amidst all the challenges will go on increasing and your clarity of perception your clarity of vision will also keep increasing as the light of wisdom starts shining forth from within you and with that clarity whatever things you can change externally you will be able to change someone has sent a a mail to me saying that sir if i do sadhana will my wife change <laughs> this is the question which he has sent now the person has asked in a very genuine way now the answer to that is i cannot give you all that guarantee if you do sadhana i don't know whether your wife or your husband or your boss or your neighbor all these people will change but one thing i can tell you if you do sadhana you will change and you will know how to deal with everyone because your clarity will increase you will know exactly what the other person's psychology is so accordingly you will be able to adapt yourself so that the relationship is good the relationship becomes uh, wonderful and uh, when the when your clarity increases when you when you start radiating the higher spiritual energy from within then that will have a positive influence on others also your spouse your children your colleagues in office everywhere and you are increasing the chances of them also changing in a positive way so when it comes to the world no guarantee can be given but when it comes to inner transformation 100% guarantee can be given that is what is within your control so forget about everything else just focus on becoming awakened when i say forget about everything else what i mean is don't worry too much about your problems in life see most of your time you're just wasting by worrying about uh, you know whether this will happen this way that will happen that way will this person react in this way if i go and talk to this person like that will he or she react in this way so many worries so many assumptions just uh, 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 you know uh, ensure that you you are not peaceful at all so drop all that and just focus on becoming more awakened through your sadhana let people have their faults who are you and me to correct them let them settle their accounts with god you look into yourself and you purify yourself the way to influence others is by changing your energy pattern don't change your energy pattern in order to influence others no that is incidental so it is not only this person who has asked this question uh, many others you know have to do the self introspection what are you using this knowledge for what is your attempt are you trying to change others with this knowledge or are you trying to change yourself if it is a former you will not grow spiritually you will not get that happiness and bliss from within whereas if you use this to become more and more alive to become more and more awake then it will definitely be an antidote to all your stress to all your problems the choice is yours only so in that which is night for all beings it is the same road only it is the same room but it is night it is dark the self control one is awake he has brought in the light it is not that you need to change something something externally in order to become spiritual 
being uh, living in your home living uh, whatever you know uh, uh, conforming to your lifestyle whatever be your lifestyle you can still be become a buddha an awakened one see generally people have strange concepts of spirituality they believe that in order to get awakened i need to change the place from my place i need to go somewhere else i need to change my dress they think by changing your dress nothing is going to happen i need to change my uh, you know every my, my lifestyle everything i need to change not required if some something in your lifestyle is causing damage to any aspect of your personality is harming you then you need to change it otherwise just be whatever you are and uh, start practicing this high of wisdom that is the beauty of this uh, poetic expression which he is giving the place being the same when it is night that is when there is darkness you are unable to move freely you get uh, yourself hit against various things but when you bring in light now again the place being the same your life changes completely that is the amazing uh, insight which this uh, example gives you know and that which is night for all beings the self control one is awake sanyami so now we'll go to the next line that in which beings are awake yasyam jagrati bhutani sa nisha pashyato munehe that in which beings are awake is night to the sage munehe munihi means sage pashyata Pashyataha means one who sees. See, in the very construction itself, it looks like a contradiction. And one hand he says it's night to the sage; he is unable to see. On the other hand, he says who sees? Pashyataha. This is a typical uh, style of the scriptures, the language of contradiction. I covered it when we started the verse, no? so that the mystery element. within you increases so that the 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 uh, you know you you become curious see when the curiosity is there you will start asking questions you will start seeking knowledge wisdom when there is no curiosity there will be no effort from you to know uh, uh, to know more so in the spiritual path the curiosity should always be kept alive and that is what these masters are trying to do by using the language of contradiction so in the previous line i had explained in detail about how the uh, how to apply this jagra as a sadhana jagra means getting awakened becoming more aware becoming more watchful attentive now when you increase your awareness there is a danger the second line is is warning you of the danger and also giving you a solution for that if you read it superficially you cannot understand it that's why we are going to go into the depth and see what is the danger when you become more aware whenever you are not aware of something as they say you know ignorance is bliss but when you start becoming more aware of something then there is a danger of you getting involved in that thing i said be attentive be watchful that is a sadhana of jagra but when you go on practicing it after a while you may there the you may go into the other extreme that is the danger where 
you become totally involved and enmeshed in the world. Now, when that happens, you need to come back to the center. So, either you are not at all aware, but when the awareness increases, you may slip into the other extreme of involvement. A classic example of this is uh, when you are when you're not aware of another person's negativity, let us say. You are just relating to that person and that person is cheating you. He, 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 he has a lot of negativities, you are not aware of it. And suddenly now you start seeing things as black and white. That is, you are able to uh, see things more clearly, read people more clearly. Then you start seeing the other person's negative qualities. Up to that it is fine because accordingly you will uh, know how to move with that person. But if you go to the other extreme, what will happen is those negativities now will start bothering you. You will get completely involved entangled with the other person's negativity. That will start disturbing you now. It will become a block for you. You will not be able to relate with the other person. This is a, a very big uh, a danger which every sadhak goes through. At that time, uh, uh, what sadhana should you practice? It is embedded in this line where he says, That in which beings are awake is night to the sage. So, when it comes to the second line, Jagra, what does Jagra mean? It means getting involved. He uses the word Jagrati. It's a Sanskrit grammatical construction. So, the Jagra means getting involved, caught up, going to the other extreme. In the, in the first line, Jagra means becoming awake. Now, there is awake in the sense becoming aware. Now, when you are increasing your awareness, if you are not objective, you will not stay put at the center. You will go to the other extreme. You will become involved and entangled. That is what he is calling as the person, uh, the in that in which beings are awake. Now, that in which beings are awake is night to the sage. Means uh, we, we will see what uh, Muni he means and then what Pashyataha see see he is a seer. You know what all that means we'll see. But first, uh, in, in general, so. The, the sage, that is a yogi, ensures that his awareness keeps increasing, but he, he also ensures that he doesn't go to the other extreme and gets involved with the negativities which he starts seeing now, whether it is about others or whether it is about uh, himself or herself. The moment you get involved with the negativities, now that will slowly start pulling you, your consciousness down again. Many, many people tell me this, that when they start doing the Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana, they become more disturbed. Sir, my agitations have increased, my negativities have increased, they say. Your negativities have not increased. Your awareness about the negativities increase. And when that happens, you should be careful that you don't, that, you know, that does not start disturbing you. That is where the practice of objectivity helps. So, if the first line, in the first line, the meaning of Jagra is to become, um, uh, awake, to get awakened, to become more aware. The second line, you know, the stress, 
the sadhana the hidden sadhana the message which which is there in the second line is practice of objectivity this is very very important as your awareness is increasing if you also don't practice objectivity there is a good chance that you will get involved with whatever you're seeing see when it is uh, completely dark you don't even know what it is there is nothing for you to get involved that is a tamasic life but as the uh, uh, the room is lighted up you start seeing so many things now you may see a lot of dirt in one corner of the room you may see uh, uh, you know something which is so wonderful in the other corner of the room so naturally the mind may get entangled in all these and it may lose sight of the ultimate purpose so the idea of increasing the awareness is to learn to handle the negativities and also to experience the positive things in life and outgrow them so that you become prepared for the highest experience of enlightenment but that can be done only if you also practice the sakshi bhav sakshi bhav means the sadhana of just being uh, aware without any judgment objectivity if you don't practice objectivity then this awareness inst- you know using this light the awareness instead of merely handling the negativities now you will get involved with the negativities that will start affecting you instead of uh outgrowing uh experiencing the positive things and outgrowing again you will get involved with the positive th- positive things and you will go on increasing your desires more and more you will move away from the infinite that is why the second line is um uh, uh you know key, is the key to a yogi who is advancing the second line has no meaning without the practice of the first line if you first don't do the practice of jagra which is uh, uh, which i have explained enough you know to become awakened the second line is not applicable at all but when you as a sincere sadhak when you try to increase your awareness more and more if you practice those three aspects the relative aspects of getting awakened which were which were explained to you in the past few weeks if you practice all that then uh, this second line becomes very pertinent to you you also need to add one more element here is night to the stage night means being fully aware but objective that is not involved not attached to whatever you are experiencing in this uh, in this in the second line night means that in the first line night meant uh, ignorance here it is not ignorance you are uh, the person is already fully awake he is he, he uh, the he is he, he is practicing the sadhana of awareness but then what is dark to him uh, what is night to him the involvement the attachment he doesn't allow his mind to get attached he experiences everything in life see life is meant for you to experience and enjoy whether it is sense enjoyments whether it is emotional pleasures intellectual pleasures whatever it is enjoy them experience them fully but if your mind gets stuck there then you will not move up further so objectivity is a crucial uh, thing is a crucial aspect of sadhana so when you start doing sadhana you will become more aware of the negativities within you you should not allow that uh, to disturb your mind many sadhaks get into a state of depression when they do sadhana because they say oh now i have all these negativities you always had them now you become aware of them so rather instead of 
allowing that to disturb you now you should become more happy till yesterday i was not aware of all this dirt which was there within me now i am aware and with this higher wisdom with the higher grace i will purify myself that is objectivity it's a a, a beautiful uh, sequence which he is giving that is why he says that in which beings are awake is night to the sage and then immediately he says pashyato one who is seeing because see, that is where the deeper message lies If, uh, because in the first line you would have understood nisha night as ignorance so he is ensuring that you don't mistake uh the same word nisha now to mean ignorance so he says no no that person is seeing means that person is awake the person is fully aware he has got that light of wisdom but then what is he uh what is night to him he ensures that is uh, if the, because of the aware he ensures that he does not slip into the other extreme when his awareness increases in that sense the other extreme is night to him he doesn't fall a prey to that what an amazing uh, message for all the sadhaks you know the sequence which he is giving if you just follow the flow of energy which he is giving your entire personality will get transformed so when you are relating to people today you will be relating in an ignorant way but as you gain this knowledge when you gain more clarity you will begin to understand them better and when uh, when i say when you begin to understand them better you will see uh, all the negativities and the positivities uh, within them actually you know he uses the words pashyatah means seeing seeing means uh the, the sage's third eye is opened so intuitively he is able to penetrate and he he is able to see all the uh, negativities and uh, positives uh, positivity stored in the deeper layers of the other person if he wants to he can see but that is where the danger also comes because as long as you don't see these things you are ignorantly blissfully relating with others but when you start seeing what is there in them now to allow that not to affect your mind and continue relating will become difficult many sadhaks have told me sir as i am doing sadhana now i am not able to relate to the world i tell them no that is where this objectivity should be practiced why you are unable to relate to the world because you are able to see more things clearly which means you are seeing the negative aspect you are also seeing the positives but as i have always told you the negatives attract the mind fast so that is where you have to bring in the sadhana of objectivity seeing things as they are factually and not allowing them to affect you ah uh, this person is a short tempered person don't pass any judgment oh that person is short tempered the moment you do that now that will start affecting you mm. this person has jealousy within her or him just see it factually like you say you know this is a table this is a chair this is black this is white this is red you you see all this objectively similarly start seeing the qualities in others also objectively same way within you uh, earlier i never knew that i had uh, this negative quality of um, anger or jealousy now i have become aware okay i have this jealousy i am jealous of this person just be factual oh i have this jealousy 
no what shall i do i am such a low person the moment you start getting into that frequency then your spiritual progress will be halted because you will develop an unnecessary guilt with respect to the world you will start developing a hatred with respect to yourself you will develop a lot of guilt guilt also comes from hatred only that is you will start hating yourself that is why in the kato upanishad he says walking on the spiritual path is like walking on the razor's edge you know a razor is there and you're walking on the edge one slip here one slip there it will cut you so you will have to walk very carefully that is why uh you know they say that uh, you know a guru is very much necessary to progress in this path some people ask is a, is a guru actually necessary if you take it on paper not necessary if you practice all this by yourself yes you will have to develop but practically whether it's possible it's like literally walking on the razor's edge and the guru carefully keeps watching whenever you you are about to slip on the right side he brings you back to the center if you are about to slip on to the left side he again brings you back to the center that's all the work of a guru is the progress you will only have to make so in the previous weeks we were i was emphasizing um on the sadhana of jagra getting awakened now in the second line the emphasis is on practicing nisha the sadhana of nisha that is objectivity things see you you become aware but don't go to the other extreme and lose yourself practice a certain amount of detachment the objectivity standing apart and watching things without judgments being very very factual you should learn to be become factual in life you know when you go to your guru and the guru tells you this is just an example that uh, this which you have done is wrong immediately what you do is you take it upon yourself no 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 sir i am not a that kind of a person many people do that when a guru says this is wrong he means that action is wrong he doesn't mean you are wrong he doesn't mean you are a bad person the moment you lose your objectivity then you will mix up the action with the with your own personality and the moment you uh, mix up action with your personality you will become very very sensitive and a person who is sensitive can never grow in life because it will prevent you from learning new things because in order to learn something new you need to first know uh, you need to become aware of what is wrong with the old way of functioning and if you are sensitive about that then you, you all your energies will only be wasted in trying to somehow or other prove that things are okay with you rather than uh, learning and changing so that in which beings are awake instead of awake now as a sadhak put it as involved caught up so that in which beings are caught up is night to the sage who sees so the sage is fully aware he is seeing everything but that is night means he has cut off that involvement aspect he is objective is night to the sage means that sage is objective he practices objectivity so we'll stop with that i want you to think about this um uh, it's a very very uh, powerful message next week we will go into little more depth about uh, 
uh, how he has used the words awake and uh, nisha that is the night more insights i'll give you but this week you do the small sadhana that is uh, just try and become aware that is list down things which are disturbing you and you will always find that what disturbs you will be something negative it could be a negative situation or it could be a negativity in another person now if you carefully study your own mind you will find that you are aware of the negativity and now you have identified with the negativity so much you become so involved with the negativity and to that extent where the negativity is disturbing you today it could be a behavior of another person it could be an attitude the, the attitude of another person whatever it may be so you are what you are identifying with when you identify with the positives you will become positive when you identify with the negatives you will become negative so the small sadhana you do take up those things which are disturbing you those people you are disturbing uh, who are disturbing you and then write down what is it in that person which is disturbing me you will become more specific there would be certain negative qualities negative behavior those are the things which are disturbing you today now you ask yourself you, you can not mechanically asking yourself questions but just uh you know try to see what is happening in the deeper layers of your mind you will find that you would have completely identified with that negativity of that person is it really worth it if if you have a negativity and you're disturbed by that that itself they are saying it's not required you need to keep changing if another person has a negativity and you are disturbed by that you are unnecessarily taking up uh, outside problems and you are stuffing them within you within you yourself so then what do you do about it introduce this concept of objectivity there okay this person has this negativity just like you say this is a table this is a chair the first attempt itself you will not be successful that's where the daily sadhana the yoga sankirtan sadhana will help in becoming more objective see the sadhana helps you on one hand to become aware it increases your awareness on the other hand it also increases the objectivity element within you otherwise a yogi will be the most disturbed person because with his clarity he will see all the negativities and if he allows that to affect his mind he will be finished but he also has this objectivity detachment so do that sadhana this week in today's meditation uh i'll take you deep within yourself and introduce this you know concept of objectivity we'll awaken it a little bit so that it will be easy for you to practice all these principles so before we do the meditation i will take up one more question which has come this question has been asked by manjunath ji he has put it in the youtube section haryom yogeshri pranams thank you for bringing in so much clarity on the various states of awakening it is very difficult to comprehend but your untying of this mystery is making it easy for us i request a clarification you had highlighted that the dreams we get are a reflection of our immediate issues of concern stress or anxiety however i do not make any connect with many of my dreams as they are random too many dreams also makes one tired as we get up on some days please guide me on how to overcome this uh see dreams actually represent so many things it is not that dreams represent only the immediate issues i only said unresolved issues 
may be immediate issues, may be deep rooted issues. See, what is a dream? Whatever is unfulfilled in the waking state, whatever experiences are not completed, will come out in the dream. Now, supposing you're, you want a car in the waking state, but you are unable to get that particular car, then you will dream as if you are driving the car. Uh, this is only a, a simple example I am giving, but a, uh, it is much more complicated than that. But first you understand the principle. This is an immediate issue, but sometimes you may be having deep-rooted issues in, your, in the deeper layers of your mind. Something which happened when you were uh, a baby, that may have formed an impression deep within you, that may come out as a dream. Something which you would have experienced in your past births, which you are not experiencing right now, that may come out in the dream. That is where you will not find any correlation between the dream and what is happening to you right now. But actually there is a correlation. Now why is a dream a little uh, strange? That is, you will not find the cause and effect very clearly defined in the dream state of consciousness as they are defined in the waking state. Why? Because the consciousness itself is not fully awakened. That is what I said, deep sleep, dream and then waking state. So, whatever issues you are having in the waking state of consciousness, at the conscious level, at the subconscious level and at the deeper level, the same issues only will manifest as dreams also. So, what, when you are able to correlate things with the conscious level of the mind, but when dreams come out from your subconscious mind and the deeper layers of your mind, when they manifest, you are unable to correlate because you are not aware of them as a waker right now. So, there is a correlation. They are not haphazard as you are, um, uh, as you have mentioned here. This you are saying, I, I, I do not make any connect with many of my dreams as they are random. They are not random. They are coming from within you only. Your mind is only projecting. But which part of your mind is projecting? That is a question. Whether it's your conscious mind or subconscious mind or the deeper layers of your mind. If, it's a, if, the, consci if the same issues which have already come into your conscious mind now, if they come out as dreams, you can... You will not say they are random. You will be able to correlate. But the deeper issues which you are having right now, you are not aware of them. See, you may be uh, saying, I am not affected by uh, my uh, child's behavior. This is just an example I am giving. I have a child and I am not affected by his or her behavior or I have a tough boss, I am not affected by his behavior. Consciously, you may be saying that to yourself and to others. But at the deeper level, you may be very much affected. So, those things will start projecting a dream. And you will say, oh, that dream is not at all connected to my waking state. There is that connection. Because whether it is a dream state of consciousness, whether it is a waking state of consciousness, all these are stemming from the, uh, from the seeds which are there in the unmanifest stage. That is a deep sleep, you know. They are all coming from there only. So there has to be a correlation. Whether you understand it directly or not, it does not matter. That is the first thing. The second thing is too many dreams makes one tired as we get up on some days. Yes, uh, just as if you go on working right now without any rest, you will feel tired. Similarly, in the dream, it is a, it is an, your, your mind is working, it is not resting. So naturally, when you wake up, you will feel tired. So uh, how do you solve that? At one go, you cannot solve that because the deeper issues have to be solved. So that is why I have given practices like Yoga Vishramaha to be done uh, once a week and then uh, as you keep doing your sa uh, regular sadhana, daily sadhana to uh, handle the, the deeper issues, 
the yoga vishrama has meant to release that extra stress which you accumulate so these practices will help you to uh, will help in increasing the quality of your sleep so that when you wake up you will feel more fresh as we go along i'll be introducing more sadhana in the higher empowerment programs where before you sleep i will give some specific material where you can practice that uh, small meditation and go to sleep that will help in increasing the quality of your sleep but that is not applicable in the initial stages when uh, you know there are other things to do but as you become more prepared we will see all that but as of now the materials which i have given you use them effectively use the yoga vishramaha to relax yourself at least once a week so that that extra pressure will be removed they will not come and spoil your uh, sleep you know and also this is a message not only to the person who has asked but to everyone you, you see also you should practice this that is uh, you should practice opening up uh, to the guru you should practice opening up in life itself in general if you are very stiff if you bottle up everything within yourself they will all come out uh, as dreams if you are affected by something say i am affected nothing wrong you know some people a near and dear one may have passed away they'll say no 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 i don't feel any sorrow either uh, you know you you don't have any emotions at all or you have crossed over everything even a person who has crossed over will just uh, act according to the situation you know a yogi is one who is spontaneous when he feels like crying he'll cry he will not be shy he will uh, to ex- ex- uh, you know he will not feel that oh if i cry will others perceive me as weak all these complexes he will never have if a joke is cracked he'll laugh heartily like a child so this is a sadhana which you need to practice so when you practice that you will start completing your experiences in the waking state and when you start completing your experiences in the waking state automatically the dreams you know you, you the the necessity of the dreams will start reducing you will get you will have a better quality sleep okay so you practice these things we will uh, now do the meditation sit in a relaxed way keep your spinal cord erect and uh, gently close your eyes do deep breathing with every breath i am becoming more and more relaxed
with every breath i am becoming more and more alert and awake as i'm becoming more and more aware in life i also choose to become objective detached whenever i see any negativity in another person i am an observer no judgments no conclusions just a neutral observer whenever i see any negativity within me i look at it with a sakshi bhav as a neutral witness no guilt no depression
I am that supreme self which is beyond the waking dream and deep sleep states of consciousness hundred percent awareness hundred percent detachment and objectivity offer your gratitude to god supreme offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters slowly come back Wiggle your fingers, your toes. Rub your palms together to create a warmth. Cup your eyes with your palms. gently rub your eyes your cheeks forehead top of the head back of the head and neck slowly open your eyes Welcome back. So today I have taken you deep within yourself and activated the objectivity a little bit. along with the awareness 
is very important to balance awareness with objectivity. There are many more elements of sadhana as and when the context comes, they are all being revealed to you. Whatever is uh, inspiring for you, just pick it up and start practicing. You cannot practicing everything, you, you cannot practice everything at one go. But whatever inspires you, take it up. Overcome the tamas and start putting in the effort. The Prana Tattva level 1, which we are going to have uh, in November, December, is going to be a very powerful program. So all these meditations, the sadhana tips, these will help you to receive and absorb uh, the energy which is going to be invoked in that program. I have received many questions regarding the uh, Prana Tattva. As we go along, I will answer all of them in the coming weeks. One person has asked uh, as to what exactly we will be doing during the Prana Tattva course. Uh, as I told you, it is an empowerment program. so the higher energy will be invoked. In every program, even during the Sunday discourses, the higher energy is invoked. But in the empowerment program, it'll, the, the intensity will increase uh, uh, plus uh, a certain amount of energy transfer will be there. That is why all this registration and all these have been kept because there has to be a commitment from the student. It cannot be a casual uh, hearing, you know, uh, very deep, intense meditation sessions will be done. You will have the opportunity to do it with a master, which will cause tremendous self purification. Your base capacity your, of uh, meditativeness will increase. It will have uh, you know, it's very difficult to quantify the benefits. So the principles will also be explained and then the practical aspects will be made to practice them, the, the practice the inner sadhana. So all these will be there. Exactly what will be done, you'll have to attend the course to know that. But these are all the general uh, things which will be done. You can read the uh, website where uh, all these details have been given. And then if you have any specific doubt in any of those points, that also you can ask. Somebody has asked me, you know, uh, uh, the word uh, aura expansion was has been used in the course objectives or somewhere. So what exactly is this aura expansion? That uh, um, I will explain to you in the coming weeks. Uh, more than what exactly is aura expansion, you need to know what are the benefits of that. The aura expansion is, is a very powerful uh, sadhana, you know, which the, our yogis practice. So the first level will be taught in this prana tattva. So the benefits of that is what uh, you need to understand why you should do that. So that we'll see in the coming weeks as and when the context comes, I'll uh, explain all that. Another person has asked me uh, some more questions regarding the course objectives. So we will take up all those questions in the coming weeks. Okay. So do, uh, do your sadhana regularly on a daily basis, practice whatever inspires you, start putting in the effort, start practicing. These are all, these will all help in preparing you
for uh, higher and uh, for the higher levels of sadhana empowerment okay so thank you very much we'll uh, meet next week hari om